Hello everybody, my name is Dawn Crystal and anyone who knows me, I'm into holistic therapies. Anything natural, we will find a way to help you. So whether it's coaching, connecting with your spiritual realm, whether it's connecting with your inner healing, your inner child, we will find a natural way to support you. And today I'm really privileged because I'm going to introduce a beautiful lady who came into my life a short time ago, well just over a year, and her story touched me. And if you can relate to feeling trapped within a situation, I know that you will connect with her story today. I want to initially say a very warm welcome to you. When I introduce Denise and Little who's going to join me, you will understand a little bit more of why it's so important to stand up for yourself and what you believe is right. To listen to your higher self, to your intuition, Listen to what feels right to you, not be swayed by what other people expect of you. And I'd like to just gently introduce her with some music because her music is so healing, it touches souls. It touches us in ways that we know music can, but she speaks through her songs. So take a moment just to sit back and relax just for five minutes and listen. Connect with your healing soul and listen to our beautiful words.
send in this thought out of healing to anyone who needs to change patterns right now. Because you know that they're worth more than that. You know that you are worth more than that. If you choose to change your pattern today, you will change your life. If you encourage and nurture by sending out grateful healing to those who need help and support right now, you will change their life because you care enough to make a difference. You can make a difference right where you're sitting right now. It all begins with a choice that you make this morning. So just for the moment, just carry on holding that thought. How can I help somebody today? Think of the person concerned. Send that healing out to them. Maybe there's a group of people, one area that needs help and support right now. Send that healing out. Hold that thought. Things will be sorted for their highest good. Maybe not in the way that you would choose for them, but in the way that they need to choose for themselves. Just holding that thought. Connecting your center of love, breathing that energy into your heart, deep down into your stomach. And just holding that thought and sending that healing out. And as you listen to Denise's story, just keep holding that thought. We'll come back and join in a little meditation after she's shared with us this morning. Just keep holding that thought. Anyone pops into mind, you have the ability to help them. Through your higher self, through your angels, through your guides, through the great universe. If you believe that you're ready to make a change in your life and in theirs, this is the time to connect. So just holding that space for as long as you need to throughout the session. Let this be the time when you make changes. So very shortly, I'm going to introduce Denise to you. And, you know, this is new for both of us. We're, well, let's just say we're trying out a pilot scheme to see what works. And I would say my message for you today would be, one of the messages for today would be, if you have an idea, don't wait till you get perfect. Jump in and have a go, because somebody could be listening to your message and they need to hear what you have to say today. You know, if we wait until we get this perfect, it's probably got to take a few more weeks to gather the right team of people around us. But we've got to jump in with two feet. Let's give it a go. Because you never know who is waiting to listen to your message. This is the day when you can make a difference. So I'm just waiting for Denise to connect with us and then we'll introduce her to you. Because this woman, she has changed her life. And through that, she's also changed other people's lives. And that's the story I would like to share with you today. As you ch make changes in your life, you will influence those around you and anyone who is destined to come into your life on this day forward. So hang in there for a moment and we will let Denise in shortly. Yeah. And very good morning, Denise. How are you, dear? Hi, Dawn. Um, good morning to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very well, thank you, despite the uh, freezing cold May bank holiday. No, it's cold. Actually, it's really cold down here. It's such a change from last week when we walked around in T-shirts. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. okay. But thank that. A good reason to be indoors and doing something useful today. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I've just shared your beautiful song with our audience because, for me, when I listen to your music, it is just about from here. You sing from here. And I know that because with every song, you've got a message within there, haven't you? And the one I chose was Breaking Free. Oh, no, don't pass it on. Oh, well, yeah. I think I was give a clue to what's coming next. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. So don't pass it on. Yes. And okay. how did that song come about, Denise? Well, it was written about 15 years ago, and that was in London. 
and I uh, was working in the music industry and I'd met this producer and he'd worked with some quite famous people like Boy George back in the day and then um, Debbie Harry from Blondie Days but when she was doing her comeback and so I met him I said I want to do a couple of songs in the studio and I'll pay um, and so we got talking and he was telling me this amazing story about his childhood and just getting to know each other and what made us tick so he told me a few details and I was so moved by his story of abuse as a child and being thrown down the corridor as a young baby uh, that I felt moved to write a song about that Bless and you. so I went in the studio and I, um, I wrote this song um, because I was motivated by feeling the feeling of yeah. what I was writing about it just I just wrote it in a couple of days that's how I roll <laughs> and so we just recorded this song together and he produced it put all the music to it for me and um, and then I also had been reading somebody had given me a book in that week and I don't normally read stories about child abuse but this was as, almost exactly the same story about a young boy that was the scapegoat of the family and he had been really bullied, you know, thrown up against the wall and, and all sorts, but in and out of homes and then having yeah. to go back, back to his family. And so the two things together, I think, are what re really sparked it for me. And um, not, I didn't have that exact same experience, but I did have the abuse in other ways, which I know that you want to ask me about. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll cover that in a moment, but thank you so much. And the reason I have invited you here today, I think because we've got so much in common, although our journey has been very different, we've yes. actually both come to this understanding that the most important thing, I think, is to trust your gut feeling and listen and work from here. Because oh, I think there's a lot of people out there who are, I'd say, especially with the pandemic and everything that's been going on, their mind is just so crammed full of what someone else is saying, what someone else is saying, what this influences creating in their lives but they're st not stopping to listen to their heart yes i think that's right the fear of uh, the fear mongering by the the government and the um media especially is not helping with no that. that's not helping and i know they've all got jobs to do i respect that but mm -hmm. i do have to say i am a little concerned of how this has got the impact on our children and I think when I heard your song, it kind of resonates with my childhood where there was things that happened that I wouldn't wish on other people. Mm. And school days, I, I just could not concentrate. I didn't feel as though I had the sense to take on board anything they're talking about. And I think I came out of school assuming there was something wrong with me. And I think, you know, that kind of flowed all the way through my school days. But I thought that wasn't good enough. Yes. OK, so you didn't feel comfortable in your skin. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's exactly what's happening to people. They don't feel comfortable yeah. doing normal things anymore. And it's going to be quite difficult to get back into, you know, socialising and going to the shops and just not feeling that sense of anxiety or fear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely feeling safe, I think, as well. For me, I didn't have anywhere that I felt safe. Mm. And yeah. I think for yourself, if we're going back to when we first met Denise. When I was at the radio show, as you trusted your gut feeling enough to get away from a situation where you weren't safe or you didn't feel safe. Yes, that's right. Um, and there were quite a few things that triggered that um, yes. response in me. And it was, um, there were tools that I didn't realise I was using at the time that helped me. And did you want me to just go back yeah. in time? Yeah, maybe go back a little bit, just so people can understand where you're coming from, because neither of us are talking from a textbook. We're talking from experience that we've been through. And we just yes. want to share that message that if someone feels trapped in a situation, they do have choices. Mm, OK, so the, the early ways of um, becoming conscious, you know, that you are feeling like that is reading. Um, so when I was in my early 20s, I was um, I was raised in a mind controlling religion. Um, fundamentalist Christian and I had been um, in that since I was 10 but in my early 20s when your mind starts to tick you know um, I started reading some psychology so I was reading Jung and Freud 
um, nothing too heavy, but just the overall. Um, and then some pop psychology, like I'm okay, you're okay, and um, the games people play. And that was uh, when they were first, you know, writing these novels or these yeah. pop psychology books. So I would have, um, that would have been in the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. And um, I would say that opened my mind up, you know, to the, the fact that there's more going on than you realise. And then realising that effect on you didn't come to me till another 10 years after that. Yeah. Yeah. But it sort of started me off and then um, I realised when I was in my early 30s that I needed to explore going to a therapist and to try and save my marriage, I thought. But at the time, what was actually the problem was that I was in unable to use my instinct and yes. my um, exercise, my right to have my own opinion about things because of the cult and the way I was raised. The therapist, um, I would recommend, you know, having specific therapy for your particular issues. Yeah. So although it wasn't abuse in the physical sense, it was mental yeah. abuse. And so I sought out a therapist who was quite holistic, but she luckily under understood that she needed to help me to become my own person, you know, to regain a core sense of self. And that, that, that helped me over two years to then realise that I didn't want to be told what to do anymore. And I left the religion yeah. once I had that awakening to that paradigm shift in my mind. It all happened really quickly. Yeah. So, yes, um, gut instinct was there's something not right. It's something wrong with me. I'm going to go to the doctor. And then I explored it with a doctor and I said, do you think I need therapy? So there were steps. Yeah. And then while I was doing the therapy, I was painting and uh, using different colours was helping me to get bolder in yeah. myself. So I started off with all the pastel colours and that's what I used to wear. And then I started painting with more strident colours like red and black. And my therapist was like, oh, this is interesting. You know, you're you're looking at more passionate side of your nature with the red and then with the black, you're looking at your shadow side. And yeah. that was my first. Uh, I'd never heard of that before. And so she was giving me permission, you know, right, you could permission to be who you are, follow your passions and your interests. <laughs> and then it went from there, really. So I um, I left the religion, I left a controlling situation with my marriage came back to England I was abroad and started a whole new life but I was just catapulted into that and I just did it you know I didn't have time to really think about it I just did yeah. it yeah and ever since then you know I've been following my instincts so yeah <laughs> brilliant thank you so much for sharing Denise and I think you know what we were saying kind of reflects what today because we kind of had a little bit of a unusual start because we, you know, I think you were waiting for instructions from me and I was waiting for some guidelines from you and we didn't connect. And I think both of us intuitively knew we've got to be in the right place at the right time. And I would say to anybody, there is a right time in your life to make those changes. Mm. And if yeah. something inside you starts to stir up, it's not always a spontaneous reaction to go out and do something about it. But be OK with that. Be OK. Mm knowing that there's something stirring inside you that says I need to make a change and yes. as you said it took a couple of years didn't it oh yes I mean the whole process was probably 10 years yeah. where it drip 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 in my subconscious yeah. and then gradually surfacing but then when you have that awakening or that paradigm shift in your mind you feel like it's just happened really suddenly yeah yeah it does. you've been preparing the way and you've got you I was gentle on myself because you know, you're, you've got your, I had a child, a young child at the time. So you have things to consider, you know, and um, you have to be brave and strong to, to walk away from yeah. all of that. Absolutely, Denise. And, you know, you've actually, from all of this, you've actually created a book to help other people as well, haven't you? Yes, that's right. Again, it's, it's not something that I was instinctually drawn to do. Initially, I wanted to have fun. <laughs> so I went, and I just did all the things I wasn't allowed to do 
in, during my teens and my 20s. And then I decided I wanted to be a singer and a songwriter and I was working in London. And it wasn't until I started talking to more people about what had happened to me that people were saying, you really need to write a book about this. <laughs> and I'd never seen myself as a writer. But once I started, I realised that, yeah, it was really important for me to do that and for myself. And then later in later years, it was more, how can I make this book? So it's not just about me and my story. It's just something that people can pick up and understand and how it can help them and maybe help prevent, um, you know, children becoming drawn into a cult of any kind. And and just really what the process of, of that is and what goes on behind closed doors, because, yeah. you know, anyone that's in a secretive organisation will know um, that's how abuse thrives, because the outside world, the social services and the police don't get to know yeah. about what's happening. Yeah. And so I have included some of that in my book as well. OK. And what is your book called, Denise? It's called Rising from the Ashes of Jehovah's Witnesses. I've got to write that down from the ashes. Okay. Because I have seen your book and you actually gave me a copy really kindly. And I lent it to a friend and that's the last time I saw it. It was just before yeah. the pandemic. So that was like interesting. She obviously needed to read that at the time. And yes. I think it's fair to say, you know, just from your story, because I think this is something we could pursue further on because... I feel there are a lot of people who can relate to your story. And it, it's not necessarily about religious cult. It could be within a family situation. It could be within a mindset that has been instilled on you by somebody yeah. else. And when we get that feeling of feeling trapped within a situation, our gut instinct will kick in. And I think that's really important that people start listening to that because yeah. there's so yeah. much influence around us. Mm. If we can stop and be still, and I did this over the weekend, I kept last week I kept getting headaches and I'm thinking, why am I getting headaches? And first of all, I started to panic a bit because I'd had a stroke and I thought perhaps that was my blood pressure and all that sort of stuff. Then I thought, I kept saying, the thought kept coming in my head, switch off the computer, switch off your phone. I didn't not listen. <laughs> I was trying to, you know, carry on regardless. And then my phone dropped on the floor with the help of the oh, cat yeah. and smashed so I couldn't see the screen. And oh, then yeah. I came home, rushing home, thinking, oh, well, don't worry, I'll do it on the computer. Could not get into the internet for two days. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, so sometimes if, you know, if we don't listen to that gut feeling, life will make life a bit harder for you. Yes, absolutely. And going into that quiet actually yeah. helped me to realise just how much I'd got into what I'd call my beta state of mind, where I was busy, busy, busy trying to do this, trying to be there for anyone and everybody. And I wasn't giving myself time out to let my mind be still, to listen to my gut feeling. Yeah, yeah. We just slip into it, don't we? Yeah. But we're conscious enough to know that we have to pull ourselves up. Yeah, yeah, really absolutely. But for anyone it. who's just starting this, I would say a really quiet way of doing this is just to go quietly into your mind. And what I'd like to do, Denise, with you is go quietly into that place and we'll both start that process. So helping people to understand how they can start. Because... You know, there are a lot of people out there who have no idea about mindset, and I was one of them. If somebody told me three years ago that I was going to be talking about mindset, I would have think they were a bit, what, psychology, <laughs> you know, psychiatrist yeah. or something like that, because that was the road yeah. I could have gone. But yeah. it would not have resonated with me. But we all need someone to just give us that gentle step to say, take a chance. Make a different choice today. Mm. So what I'd like to do is just a gentle meditation, which like just two minutes, which people can bring into their life each day to help them feel empowered. Lovely. And, and we're going to use what you said, like those positive words that you were using to help feel, people feel empowered. Because, you know, I, I'm very fortunate because I work with remedies and, you know, these are like, these, oh, are, I love my, these are my saviour. Yeah. Bath flower remedies. Yeah. Yes. And there is two remedies, which I would say century and cherry plum are really great for anyone who feels stuck in a situation. So century helps you to respect your own boundaries, know when to say yes and when to say no. Mm -hmm. And cherry plum is that feeling of when you feel trapped. Right. And when you feel like you've gone out of your mind because you can't quite tell what you're, you're experiencing. Yes, okay. So it's like you want oh. to shout or latch out or something. 
Yes, I haven't told you this, but this therapist that I chose um, <laughs> just over under 30 years ago, she was more holistic than I realised, and yeah. she actually gave me two Bach flower remedies at the time. Oh, pleasure. Excellent. And one of them was for guilt. Yep. And the other one was for suppressed anger. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, I think I credit those remedies with helping me to walk away from the religion without feeling guilty and to never look back over my shoulder. Yeah. Excellent. Well done. That's good you've said that because I think feeling guilty is one of those feelings that we carry, which is a really heavy, it's almost like feeling despondency. And whatever you're trying to do in your life to make you feel joyful, that feeling creeps back in from guilty. Mm -hmm. And when we're actually unaware of it, it becomes a way of life. So you apologise for this and you apologise for that, you think things are your fault. And pine is the remedy for being guilty. That's right, pine. And the other yeah. one was holly. That she holly, yep. Yeah. And holly is for repressed anger. And yeah. I would say to anyone listening, there are ways through, whether it's using a remedy or using your mindset to start that chain reaction. Because you're, what you're um, going through right now in your life is based on your reaction to what's happened. And as Dr. Bach said, when there's a void between your thinking and who you should be, is when dis-ease sets in. Yeah. And that's often where mental illness or anxiety, stress, panic attacks comes from. When there's mm -hmm. that void between who you should be. Because your yeah. soul is crying out to be heard, Mm. But your mind is still following that old pattern. Exactly. I mean, that's why I went to the doctor in the first place. Yes. I was having physical symptoms. Yeah. And then when we'd explored all of that, I then said, do you think it could be psychosomatic? Yeah. And he said, yes. You know, in Switzerland, they're quite advanced anyway with things like that. So yes. um, I was on private insurance. So I said, you, will you recommend me? For therapy and then I was allowed to choose my own therapist with that Brilliant. so but it it does start with um just going to somebody yeah. and talking about it and just yeah. someone you can trust that yeah. understands yeah just I think, I think that act of reaching out starts to bring a sense of relief hmm. for me when someone first told me there was nothing wrong with me I didn't need to feel guilty and you know my daughter was gonna be fine I wasn't a bad mum that was like mm. a Wow, someone just lifted this big boulder off my head. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, That's the feeling I had. It was exactly like that. It was like yeah. a huge weight had yeah. just been lifted off my shoulders and I just felt like I'd walk around on air, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So what I'd love to do is, obviously some people will not have the remedies accessible, which are they're available through the internet or people can connect to me um, yes. through my website. I think the website is probably easier, dawncrystal.com. Okay. Mm. But there are natural things that people can do for themselves. First of all, be honest with yourself. If it feels uncomfortable, it is uncomfortable. Yeah. Start maybe taking those thoughts out and writing them down. Mm. And then take just two minutes, just to close your eyes. So just gently closing your eyes. And I always say connect with your heart chakra. So when you put your fingers together in the prayer position, you're connecting meridians in your fingers which are energies that flow through your body and trigger parts of the brain, which may be a little bit dormant right now. So just connecting gently in what I'd call prayer position. You're connecting with your heart. You're starting that chain reaction of energy flowing through your body up to your mind. I'm just saying thank you to you for listening. Thank you. And breathe. Just breathing gently down into your tummy. I am safe. As you breathe in, holding it. And I let go. I'm feeling safe as you gently breathe in, right down to the bottom of your spine. Holding that feeling. And I'm feeling free to let go. Breathing in, I'm feeling safe. And I choose to let go. 
Just gently continue breathing as I gently talk. Just breathing in, I feel free. And I let go. I'm choosing to breathe in. I'm choosing to be free. Just continue breathing. Let thoughts flow in and let them flow out. In your own time, you can sit here as long as you need to. Let those words lift up your spirit, move your mindset from where it was to where it should be, where it can be, where your true potential lies. This is something you do for yourself at bedtime, first thing in the morning. Maybe bringing in some feelings of gratitude, saying thank you for the bed that you're sleeping in, roof over your head beautiful people in your life, give them thanks, moving to that place of gratitude and love. And then gently send thank you to your body and to your mind. Thank you for bringing me to my more natural state. Thank you to my higher self for listening, for guiding me today. Thank you to Denise for sharing. Thank you to whoever comes to your mind. And even those who've tested you and challenged you this week or in your lifetime, thank you for helping me to grow. Thank you. standing very quietly in that space to send thank you to you. When you feel ready, just gently take a deep breath in. I'm free to move on now. To very gently and slowly come back into the room, just moving your fingers, your toes, stretching out your body coming back to yourself. Thank you for sharing, Denise. And thank you to everybody. Because it can be as simple as that. Our mind needs something to guide us. And it starts with our thoughts. If we can actually start by changing one thought a day, we can start to change our life. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I just want to tell you how I experienced that meditation with you, centering and grounding. And then I could start to feel this energy coming up inside me. And I can only describe it as excitement. And the reason for that is that I'm currently just about to launch my own project now with music. And, um, I'm really excited about doing all the social media. I'm creating video, music videos at the moment, things that I've never thought I would do. And I'm having so much fun with it. And I can get that butterfly feeling in my stomach of excitement. And that's what makes life worth living. It does. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely, Denise. And I'm looking forward to that. And I'm going to ask you to share the name of your new album. You've got a new album coming out soon as well, haven't you? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> um, so obviously you're going to put the links to um, the social media for me afterwards. But yes. uh, just to say that I've written this in lockdown with a professional rock musician called David Donnelly, uh, who lives locally to me and feel very blessed for having the last um, year, almost year now, to write 12 songs with him. Some of them are my older songs and uh, some of them are his and some we've written together. And we were going to call it 
peaceful cacophony because it's a mixture of peacefulness and uh, ballads, but it's also that cacophony of um, chaos. And we realised that that's what's been going on with the lockdown as well. Too much quiet, too much isolation, and on the other hand, too much chaos, you know, in the thoughts and what's happening. And then the other day, we I, I saw something. <laughs> It was to do with a um, holistic health uh, newsletter, and it was called Coronasomia. Oh, <laughs> and and I thought, you know, insomnia um, yeah. was the actual subject, and the it's insomnia stemming from you know the anxieties yeah. and the fears that stem from coronavirus. So I just said to David the other day, I said, uh, "Can we change the name of the album?" <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we're going to call the album Corona Insomnia is um, I think it's going to be Corona Somia and then probably our band will stay as uh, Peaceful Cacophony but those are the reasons why we've chosen those and uh, nobody yeah. else has got that name okay. I've <laughs> Well done, love. And I'm just so looking forward to hearing your songs because I have actually, you know, listened to all of your songs, your past ones and your current ones. And I'd love the way that you change. It's almost like your your singing voice, your genre changes to fit mm. the tone of the music, what you need and the message that you're putting out there. And Thank that you. is a natural gift I think you've got there. Yes, mm. I don't like to get um, put in a corner with, with uh, my music styles. <laughs> <laughs> I want to express everything like we said it's your instincts and your feelings about life they're all very confusing and yeah. contradictory a lot of the time and you have to sort through all of that stuff yeah. to come to that place of peace and as you say meditation getting in touch with your core self is the way that you you do that one yeah. of the ways and also yeah. the Bach flower remedies really help especially rescue remedy oh, yes. and, um, I've recommended that to David because he he suffers with insomnia and he will actually be qu quite creative in the middle of the night with the music which is fairly common with musicians actually um, but on, on the other hand it's not really that healthy a lifestyle if you're doing it all the time so the rescue remedy really helps to calm both of us down when we're feeling yeah. like that it does absolutely and you know i'd say for anyone listening to this there are natural ways that you can help yourself and that was the basis of my book if, if we can just introduce it for a moment within here i've actually included all the techniques uh, no not all the techniques because someone pointed out today that i missed something <laughs> okay so that's something i'm good that's the reason i'm doing a little podcast to introduce other ways that aren't in the book right uh, within here i've introduced what the background remedies Free to be me. Free to be me, yep. Yeah. And the reason I chose the book is because through the torment and what I was going through in my mind, there were a lot of natural techniques that allowed me to be me. Mm. And me and my grandson were painting one day, and it was a painting based on something I did as a child, where the teacher told me I wasn't good at art. Ah. So I did never right. pick up never picked up paints again until I was oh. a lot older. And through painting, I started to learn to be at one with myself again. Okay. And so, you know, all it's the techniques I've introduced. <laughs> Brilliant. So all the techniques yeah. I've introduced, the flower remedies were based yeah. on what I helped me to recover from me. Yes, okay. Well, I think that's a great way for people to, yeah. to go in initially yeah. where they may not have deeply spiritual beliefs or yeah. even holistic medicine might seem a bit strange, but to, to sit someone down with a um, paintbrush and, or crayons and just yeah. do something yeah. like that. Or music. Music is a massive healer, as yeah. it has been for many of my yeah. musician friends. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And if you're not feeling creative right now, a really nice way to start this process and I think at the beginning I didn't believe I could paint I used to love doodling I'm a bit of a doodler you know if someone's talking to me I've normally got a pen in my hand and I'm doodling it helps me to concentrate it wasn't until I was older and my son was analysed um, through a child psychologist that I realised that I'd got learning problems and then I started to understand me and through doodling and through writing down how I was feeling that helped me to understand who I was and why I felt the way I did. And that's what my book is about. It's about, first of all, let's start with today. What can we do for you today? Or what can you do for you today? Yeah. Listen to that gut feeling. 
And if it doesn't feel right, let's turn it around. So natural, really gentle techniques. And most of it's free. If you're looking at then, okay, how did I get here? There's a whole section on how the past can impact on you. And then introducing the flower remedies throughout it, because I think sometimes understanding your emotional state of mind can actually help you to override it. So if I'm in a cherry plum state where I feel trapped, okay, what's the positive of that? Okay, I have calm and I have courage within me. I can make a new choice. So, you know, it's having that understanding and that's what I introduce all the way through. So people can listen more to their gut feeling, listen yes. to what's right for them, not what's been wrong. Mm. I, I think, think also, Dawn, it's a case of yeah. learning to love yourself, which means yeah. you can give yourself the permission yeah. to say, you know, uh, not everything's okay, even yeah. if I'm not at this point ready to tell everybody that but it's just something that's an internal dialogue initially and as you say the stress of holding that within can cause headaches insomnia all sorts of anxieties yes. so Absolutely. then your body forces you once it starts to well up and you start getting anxious yes. then the next stage is you reach out and you go to somebody yes. you know, that can help you so it is very much like a cocoon where you're gentle with yourself at first, but then you eventually find your wings, you know, you get out of that cocoon. Yeah. 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 The scary thing is to actually just take flight, but once you're actually flying, that's it, you know, you've got that momentum going, haven't you? Yeah, there's no turning back. Mm. No, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> I think for me, the passion came when I started to realise that other people were experiencing this as well. I thought, there was something wrong with me and that's why I was like I was when I started talking to people and this was several years on about how the remedies had helped me I was hearing a similar story from everybody like mums who thought they'd failed or mums who thought they weren't good enough yeah. you know, relationships that had gone pear-shaped and no one knew how to put them back together or how to turn it around or how to escape from it mm. for me it was like oh my god there's a whole world out here of people who need help and support so that's why I read the book because, you know, we're not all necessarily saying we're on a spiritual journey, but we're a mm. spirit within who is yearning and listening and wanting to be heard. Now, if we can listen to that and become our own best friend, which is the basis of my book, you know, listen to and love your own best friend, mm. you can make a difference in your life. And really, you know, one of my songs on the new album is called Peaceful Alchemist, and that's about... <laughs> Facing your darkness first, you know, before you can shine a light for yeah. yourself and then for other people. So yeah. it's do as I do, not as I say. Yeah. And, and that's really the, the point is you have to do the work, you have to look after yourself and build yourself yeah. up first. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Others, just by example, you don't always have to write or paint or sing it's nice if you can but just the way you live your life if you can get to that point I think one of the lines in my song is that now I live with dignity and grace mm -hmm. and, and those are things that people observe it's not something you can tell people yeah absolutely as you're saying that Denise I've got a song some words that I've written down I think would make a great song I think I need to talk to you about that yeah, I'd great. love to hear your voice behind there and I could use it as a theme tune along, alongside your song. It's like, yeah, I feel excited now. Yes, lovely. <laughs> well, what, <laughs> what I'd love to <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've been waiting for that right person to come along. I knew mm. in my head I can hear the song, but you know, yeah. <laughs> you haven't heard me singing yet. <laughs> we have to be honest and say there's something in life we're not destined to do. <laughs> singing is good. And it lifts up yeah. my spirits a lot of the time. And I, you know, I could sing along quite happily with Whitney Houston, but to put my own voice out there, I think I really do need that special person who's got to come and sing from the heart. And yeah. I know that you're actually, I've got a feeling you're that person, Denise. Lovely. Oh, thank you. And uh, the same for me. You know, I've not really performed in public before. And so my challenge will be taking this from album and studio work out there once the, the lockdown is over. But I, um, I used to work in music royalties and I know that I'm not yeah. a professional singer. So therefore, my dream is to get picked up by somebody who yes. is out there and they will then use my song. Yeah. Uh, I can sing it well enough, you know, to yeah. do a good, good um, 
de album or demo and then you get the music royalties because you've got someone who's you know famous they're already out there they're singing yeah. your song and you're behind yeah. the scenes I'm absolutely fine with that <laughs> you know you don't, have to watch that it. you don't have to do the whole thing you know it's just yeah. that would be great I'd yeah. love that yeah absolutely yeah. yeah, and I think we all need that team of people. And I think that's one thing I've realised with writing the book. That was my focus for about the last three years to get myself back on track because I'd lost my way for a bit and to be myself again. And yeah, but how important it is to recognise that we can't do everything. We do need a team of people around us to support us. So, you know, for anybody listening, Denise's story inspired me, I know, because otherwise she won't be here today. I do work with people who inspire me because I, I just take something really special from them. I just yeah. feel like if there's someone out there at the moment thinking, oh, I want to be like that, take the message from Denise today. If you see something you admire within somebody else, that's a reflection of the truth within you, who you, you are. So don't think, oh, I never can be there. If you see something within Denise and her story and her inspiration, know that deep within you, you have the same ability. You have the same gifts. So what I'd love to do. Years, Dawn, I started singing and writing 15 years ago yeah. and I started my book 13 years ago and I couldn't do them both at the same time. So that is how long it has taken me yeah. to get to where I am now. So you know, when you look at people out there, they haven't just suddenly become famous overnight. They've been working at it for years, honing their craft or getting distracted or whatever. But yeah. the, the challenge is coming back to it and believing that you are good enough, you know, to you deserve to enjoy what your life and what you're doing. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the value you put on yourself will make a difference. Mm, and start today. Yeah. Start valuing yourself by just doing a little bit of centering, maybe write your thoughts down, reach out to a friend, reach out to even a stranger can make a difference. Yeah. And listen, because within you, you have got everything you need. Sometimes we just need someone to trigger those things to help us. Yeah, that's right. Trust and um, yeah. and then support in that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But thank you so much for sharing oh, today, Denise. And what I've done, I've got four songs here ready, and I've got to give you a choice which one we play, just to finish yeah. off. Because your music goes from very soft and gentle to... Really up there and really <laughs> totally passionate. Aren't you? Rock chick. <laughs> Rock chick, that's the one. Okay, so I've got on here at the junction, reach mm -hmm. for the sun, break yeah. the pattern, or set me free. Which one would you like to choose? Well, I will choose set me free because, you know, you obviously realised from my speaking voice that I speak very quietly, but I think you'll be surprised at uh, where I find my other side, my voice in that song. And uh, it was about getting free of working in an office in London for many years and just just wanting to be me <laughs> so it's quite apt really okay so thank you so much for sharing with me today Denise and I know we've got much more work to do in collaborating in the future yeah. so watch this space everybody and remember it all begins with you and I'm going to leave you with Denise's song which is set me free and thank you Denise I look forward to next time Mummy. thank you thank you all. thank, thank you. you bless you
I'm going to rename that Dawn. I called it Set Me Free 15 years ago. And I said to David, it's on the new album. We've got to call it Set Me Free from lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And like I... that frustration. Oh, let me out of here. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much, Denise, for sharing. And I think a lot of people can relate that because, you know, you, you get that feeling of sadness on the inside where you feel like, oh, there's got to be some way. There's got way, way forward here. And if yeah. you get that feeling, whether it's in, coming in here, in here, or in your gut feeling, yeah. if you get that feeling that you're ready to set yourself free, don't wait to get perfect. Wow. Do something. Do something that will make a difference today. Yeah. Because, you know, wow. we can take a lot from Denise's story, and you can take a lot from your story. Everything you've been through today has made you who you are today. And they're all tools in your toolbox to yeah. go forward and help somebody else. Yeah. This is the most important day on earth for you today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Denise, for sharing. Right. Lovely. Good to it's be with nice. you. And uh, yeah, wish you every success with your book and your f- future ventures and your podcast. Thank you, Thank you very oh. much. And I'm excited as well today because I just found out last night as I've gone to bed that my book is on as an ebook as well today. Great. Like, Yay. <laughs> Because I That's try to amazing. make it accessible for everybody. So it's like, yeah. obviously, the book costs more money. The, yeah. Yeah. The ebook will be accessible price, pocket money size. But also, I'm asking everyone if they go to the library and get a copy in. Ask for a copy. So I've been right. to the library and they said, if people are requesting it, they will make a point of getting it in. So I'm like, yes, I will make it free for people who can't afford it. Yeah. Great. So, <laughs> For anyone listening, whatever your dream is, if you've got this instinct, this intuition inside you that says, I can do this, Mm. it's because it's meant to be. Yes, absolutely. Follow that. Yeah. So free yourself out and this is your time. Thank you, Denise. And watch this space because I'm looking forward to listening to your album soon. Yeah, Um, I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks very much, darling. Speak to you soon. Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yes. Do you want to stop recording?